Hello and welcome back to Start Learning Numbers. And as always, many, many thanks to all the nice people that support this channel on Steady or PayPal. In this part two, we will continue our discussion about the natural numbers. The idea was that we introduce a set N0 whose elements we can use for counting. However, we already learned that just writing down such an expression is not a sufficient definition for the natural numbers. For this reason, let's explicitly write down the properties N0 has. The first one is simply that N0 is not empty and it contains a special element we call 0. And the second property tells us there is a map S from N0 into N0. And this map we simply call the successor map. It bears this name because it satisfies the following three special properties. First of all, the map S is injective. In other words, different natural numbers have different successors. This gives us the visualization that the natural numbers lie ordered on a straight line. If S wouldn't be injective, we could have loops in this picture. What you should also see here is that 0 is not a successor for any natural number. One possibility to write that down would be saying that 0 is not in the range of S. Please recall, the range is just the image of the whole domain, namely of N0. Another visualization you can take for the successor map is given by arrows from left to right. There you should see the injectivity and also that 0 is not hit at all. Hence these two assumptions together explain that N0 is an infinite set. And now the third property explains that N0 is essentially the smallest possible infinite set. If M is any subset of the natural numbers that fulfills that 0 is an element in M and also that all successors lie in M again. Then with the same picture in mind, M would be an infinite set. Therefore, it has to be N0. We can also explain this in other words when M describes some property. Then this here means that 0 fulfills this property. And in addition, if an element fulfills the property, the successor satisfies it as well. Then the result is that all natural numbers fulfill this property. And this whole procedure is known as the mathematical induction. Of course, later I will show you how we can use this to prove a lot of things. However, before we do that, we first want to calculate with the natural numbers as we already know it. Of course, the first calculation one learns is given by the addition. This operation of adding two numbers you can see as a map from the Cartesian product into the natural numbers again. We just combine two natural numbers and from now on let's use the variables m and n for natural numbers. The result that comes out, which means the natural number that comes out, we just denote with a plus sign between the two inputs. Of course, you already know how to add two natural numbers, but the question here is, how is it defined? For example, we could just define 2 plus 4 is equal to 6. So this would be one way to define a map, just write down all outputs for all possible inputs. However, this is not feasible here, because we have infinitely many inputs and not enough space to write them all down. Therefore, maybe it's possible to work with variables. For example, we can say for all natural numbers m, we can define m plus 0. And of course, 0 shouldn't change anything, it should be m again. With this, we have taken care of infinitely many definitions. However, we still have infinitely many left because we have two sides here. Therefore, let's continue and look at m plus 1. Looking at the number line, adding 1 just means we jump to the next number in order. So we jump to the successor of m. Or in other words, we can use the map s here and define m plus 1 as s of m. Okay, so still infinitely many left, so let's look at m plus 2. Again, going back to the number line, we know m plus 2 should be the successor of m plus 1. So we simply have s where we put in m plus 1. Now having this, you should see how we can write down the general definition. In particular, we know what we have when the right hand side reads s and we put in m plus n. Then we have m plus the successor of n. At this point you should see 
when we have this formula and this one, then we have the whole definition for the map. However, it's a little bit strange because we don't have the explicit definition what m plus n is. For example, let's calculate 2 plus 5. Now we know we can write this as 2 plus the successor of 4. And by our general definition, this would be the successor of 2 plus 4. Now we can use that we already know that 2 plus 4 is 6, so we have the successor of 6, which is just 7. This means for getting a new result, we have to go backwards until we reach a step where we already know the result. Therefore, such a definition is called a recursive definition or an inductive definition. Now, since we are here in the foundations of mathematics, we have to make sure that such a definition makes sense. And indeed, one can prove this in general by using this property 2c here. This fact is then known as Dedekind's principle of recursive definition. I don't want to write down the proof, but I want to give you the general statement here. If we have any set capital A and a chosen element A and a map H from A into A, then there is a unique definition what it means applying H as often as you want it to A. In other words, we can give meaning to the progression A, H A, H of H A and so on. In order to put this into a precise form, we would say there exists a map from the natural numbers into A. We call it F and there is only one such map. Now if we put in the number 0, we get out A. And if we put in the successor of a natural number n, we just apply H one more time. So it should be H of F of n. Of course, often we just read the whole principle here backwards. This means that if we see something fixed at 0 and defined for the successors, then we know it exists and is uniquely defined by this property. For example, we now know that the addition is uniquely defined by these two boxes here. Okay, then in the next videos we can talk about all the calculation rules we want for the natural numbers. Therefore, I hope I see you there and have a nice day. Bye!